hero of the Philippines, General Douglas MacArthur. He decorates Captain Jesus Villamor, a gallant Filipino whose pursuit plane caused havoc among the Japs. Lieutenant Jack Dale, U.S. Army Air Corps, receives the Distinguished Service Cross for airplane actions against enemy landing forces. General MacArthur, now in command of the United Nations in the Pacific, has pledged to retake the Philippines from Japan. General MacArthur in Australia, the news that rang round the world. Huge crowds gather at Melbourne Station, waiting hours to see the hero of the Philippines. Australia welcomes him as the man of the hour. And here he is with Mrs. MacArthur. In these first pictures to reach America, we see the tremendous reception accorded the soldier who has command of all Allied land, sea, and air forces in the southwest Pacific. Burma, scene of devastating defeat for the United Nations, receives a visit of outstanding importance. China's Generalissimo Chiang Kai-shek and Madam Chang visit Mamayo between Mandalay and Lashio. But these pictures were made before Japan's lightning thrusts had conquered all but a scrap of Burma. The Generalissimo is here for a last-minute meeting with United Nations officers. His Chinese staff presents General Alexander, commanding British forces, and here is General Joseph Stilwell, U.S. Army. American supplies that looked like lots have in this case proven to be too little and too late. A Curtis P-40 pursuit plane lands at the field of the American volunteer group, the famous Flying Tiger Squadron of China's Air Force. The Tigers have made history in World War II. They have accounted for considerably more than 400 enemy planes since Christmas. Brigadier General Claire Chenault, commanding the AVG, knows Japanese tactics. His theories of aerial combat have proved sound in practice, and his squadron's victories have made the Flying Tigers the terror of the eastern skies. When they aren't shooting down Japs, the Tigers keep in trim with popular American sports. They have become familiar sights in nearby Kunming. Each man gets a bonus of $500 per Jap plane destroyed, so they're good spenders. American aid to China, although slight in most respects, has shown what it may be when more U.S. pilots like these fly a pattern of victory over the Far Eastern Front. In the Mediterranean, a British convoy plants along with its destroyer escort. Every gun is manned, ready for action against Axis air attack. Suddenly, a lookout spots Italian bombers high overhead. They swing in close to the convoy. One Italian gets too near for his health. These extraordinary films show a close-up of death in battle. squadron of giant Stirling bombers gets ready. The huge planes are gassing up for Britain's first raid on French factories in Paris. This squadron is part of a 200 plane attacking force and the loads include both demolition and incendiary bombs. Target for the great aerial armada is the Renault factory which has been building tanks and trucks for Germany. Bomber crews assemble to receive final instructions from their wing commander. Every last detail is checked. Each crew knows what to do each member takes his place in the fuselage of the immense aircraft. And now, in the dusk, they're off for France. These 
pictures taken next day by a British observation plane show the tremendous damage. Several hundred workers were killed, but it will be a long time before these plants resume supplying Germany with vital war equipment. The British fleet begins to carry out the preparations of three months before as it steams toward French Madagascar. Dusk finds French fortifications at the Diego Suarez base within range. Under the fleet's protection, landing forces head shoreward commanded by General Sturges of the Royal Marines. His own men are mixed with tough veterans of commando units. The naval base is Madagascar's only important port. With its 26,000 ton dry dock and splendid facilities for all types of naval craft, Japan could have made it a dangerous menace. After 48 hours, French resistance is broken, most of the French planes out of action. The garrison put up a stiff fight, but were overwhelmed by the speed and power of the assault. British and French high officers assemble under the portrait of Marshal Pétain to arrange the surrender. The occupation of Madagascar by Britain is a bitter setback to Axis plans. It is one outstanding example of fast, determined action, winning an important strategic victory for the United Nations. These are the first pictures of the Battle of Midway, filmed from high above the Japanese fleet. Enemy ships turn in tight circles, Evasive action against U.S. bomber and torpedo plane attack. Watch closely and you can see our bombs exploding around the Jap warships. A U.S. patrol bomber sweeps by the camera plane. Down below, an enemy cruiser of the Mogami class is heavily damaged by our bombs. Fierce clouds of smoke pour from her blazing decks. While our planes are out, Japanese torpedo bombers swarm in to attack U.S. naval forces. Anti-aircraft fire from our guns meets the attack. A burning Japanese plane smokes on the ocean surface, but Jap bombs drop dangerously near. are farther away now and wrecked Jap planes dot the scene of action. Now this task force can go about its business again. Japan's powerful thrust against Midway is stopped dead in its tracks, routed by U.S. air power. <laughs> 